previously on ITW. Real, I, I'm so disappointed about this weekend. I'm, that's not a revolve. That's oh. that's that's oh. your map. Well, it works as both a laptop and a tablet. So. Story Creator is the future of sharing stories. It's Oh, hey, David? Hey, where are you? We're about to start the show. I... You can't make it? We're... Oh. Well, well, yeah, yeah, I can do it by myself. I'll do it by myself. Yeah, that's fine. No, I won't be nervous. I'll be okay. Yes. Look, look I, I am an instructional technology specialist. This is what I do. Besides, I'm a grown man. I can handle this. Yeah. All right. Bye. <sighs> Welcome to this week's edition of ITW, the show that helps you incorporate technology into your classroom. I'm Arby Harrison, I'm flying solo today. My partner in crime, David, could make it, but he'll be back next week. But we still have a great show uh, in store for you today. Uh, we're gonna to be talking about teacher web pages. We're gonna have our first edition of what we like to call Circling CMS, where we're gonna go through the district and talk to a few people, and this week we're gonna be talking to them about how they use their web page. So stay tuned for Circling CMS. We also have a great new resource that we think would be really helpful for a lot of you Windows users. It's called excuse me, Partners in Learning. Um, it's a great resource that you guys can use, so check that out. So stay tuned for this week's edition of ITW. You won't want to miss it. On this week's episode of ITW, we want to talk to you guys about using teacher web pages. Now, there's a lot of different ways where a teacher can use teacher web pages. It could be uh, as a resource for your students where they can get documents and videos, or it could be uh, as a communication tool for parents to let them know important dates and details about what's going on in the classroom. Regardless of how you use it, there's a lot of value of using teacher web pages um, in your classroom. So, currently, CMS is supporting four different platforms. We do Wiki, we support um, Weebly's, um, uh, WordPress, and, and Google Sites. So what we decided to do is we decided to circle the district and talk to different teachers um, who are using these different platforms and talk to them about how they use their web page. So check out this edition of Circling CMS. Let's start at Grand Oaks Elementary with their math facilitator, Jen Siraki. How are you doing, Jen? Great, thank you. That's good. We're happy to have you on the show. So, can you tell us about why you chose a platform that you chose? Um, I'm currently using a Weebly, and I've actually played around with Google Sites or WordPress, and I've maintained a wiki in the past, but for the look I wanted um, and the ease of updates, I went with Weebly. So, why do you think it's important for teachers to have web pages? I think it's important for communication uh, depending on your audience. My audience currently as a facilitator are teachers and so I, I use it as a platform for resources for them to easily access and that I can easily update and have available to them. Can you use your Weebly site in, in the classroom? I know you're a facilitator now but can you use that in the classroom? Oh absolutely. I think you could post homeworks on there, you can embed videos, maybe if you're doing a flipped classroom or um, as a parent resource for um, general instructional. Purposes. What do you think makes an effective teacher web page? I think the biggest thing is you want it to be accessible to whoever your audience is. So I think organization is a major component. Um, being able to find the things that you want those, uh, whether it be parents or students or teachers, to be able to find. Well, thanks for your time, Jen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Joining us now is Meredith Barton. She's a science teacher from Albemarle Road Middle. How are you doing, Meredith? Thank you for having me. That's good. Uh, I've seen your WordPress website. It is excellent. Can you tell our viewers how you use it in the classroom? Um, so our class website is pretty much one of my favorite things to work on every day, other than our lessons, of course. Um, I really enjoy it because I'm able to kind of reflect on what we've done in class. And then for my students who aren't here, they're able to get on the website and they're 
able to read what we've done and then get whatever documents that they need. Um, and also, it's a great tool for me to reach out to my parents. For example, when a parent says, oh, well, what did you do on Wednesday when my son wasn't here? I say, oh, well, you can just look at the date that we did it. They can read what happened and they can pull whatever assignments that they missed and turn it in so they don't miss a beat. Now, is managing a WordPress site difficult? Yes, is it hard to maintain? Um, I think once you get into a, a routine and you see like you have everything figured out, you know how it goes, the process, it's very easy to use. It's very simple. You just go to your dashboard, click new post, and then type in your title, type in your post. You can add media very easily. You can add documents, um, whether they're PDF, Word, whatever file you choose, pictures, um, videos, links. It's, it's very user friendly once you get in a nice routine. Why do you think it's important for teachers to have a web page? I think for accountability purposes, I think that um, from a teacher's perspective, if you're putting your materials out there and you're making them available to your students, your parents, other teachers, um, it's, it's a very good tool for you to, um, I guess, solidify your curriculum and make sure that you're reaching everything that, reaching all the students and teachers and parents that you need to. Mary Barton, ladies and gentlemen, she has a great website, it's a great example for other teachers looking to try to use their website in the classroom. Thanks, Meredith. Thank you. Let's welcome Ms. Kramer. She's a social studies teacher from MLK. Hey, Ms. Kramer. I am great. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, now, I've been asking everybody how they use technology, or excuse me, web pages in their classroom. Your turn. How do you do it? Um, basically, my Google site is a snapshot of what is going on in our classroom. Everything from the character education program to daily assignments and resources that the students can access um, after class time um, to give them some added resources uh, to ensure they're being successful. Now your Google site has a lot of info on it. What components do you think are important for a good teacher web page? I think the most important thing when looking at an effective teacher website is the accessibility for not only your students but also your parents. Um, to make sure that it's organized, purposeful, and that each section is easy to navigate so that uh, the students and parents understand how to work with the site and get the material that they need out of it. Is your Google site hard to manage? There aren't many in CMS. Not at all. I probably update it once every other week. Um, the structure that I created um, for the Google site remains the same. The only thing that I'm supplementing is any updated information, new assignments, or any quarterly updates that I would need to add. Ms. Kramer, everybody. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Kramer. Thank you so much. All right. Finally, we have Ms. Austin from Long Creek Elementary. Welcome to ITW, Ms. Austin. We're glad to have you. No problem. All right. I see you're still using wikis. Can you tell us a few things that you like about this particular platform? I like the fact that it has tables that you can create on the front page and you can put links with photos so that it's very kid friendly and parent friendly and you can link from one the photo to the page and then link from the page back to your home page. So can you tell us why you think it's important for teachers to have a web page? I think it's important to have a web page because most parents have access to technology at the at their fingertips so that they can get on if they need a homework assignment or spelling words for that week. Um, I just think it's an important tool. They can check their newsletters, they can check information about the teacher, and I just think it's an easy, fast way to get in touch with the teacher. Now, you mentioned about the parents. What about your kids? Um, I have several links linked up for my students. Um, they have a whole helpful websites page that they can go to to access Dreambox, Raz Kids, or any other websites that they can use for math and reading skills. All right. Thank you, Ms. Austin. No problem. Last week, David and I talked to you guys about using the HP Revolve. So we thought it would be good to show you another resource that goes along with that that will really help you use that device better in the classroom. So it is a website. It says it's www.pil-network.com. The PIL stands for Partners in Learning. You'll see this is a website that was created by Microsoft and it just helps educators use Windows devices um, a little bit better in the classroom. So when you go to this site, what you're going to see is you'll see some several tabs down there um, that, you, that you can click on any of those and you'll find some great information. So if, if you'll see there's a resources tab and it has a bunch of different apps and a lot of tools that you can use and you can download those directly to your device and begin, begin using those in your classroom. It also has activities, 
Uh, it has tutorials on how you can use those. So it's a great it's a great tab to use. They also have what's called hot topics where you can um, find more information um, about make, about hot topics that they have right there. Uh, they have uh, gaming. They have one-on-one uh, -on -one initiatives, they have project-based learning, all sorts of things, personalized learning. You can go and read some of the things they have on there and see what Microsoft, how Microsoft is involved uh, with those particular topics. It's a good read. Um, they have different communities where you can collaborate with other people around the world and talk about how they're using um, their these particular products in their classroom. You can share how you're using it and then it's a great way to, to uh, educate yourself and help educate others uh, on how to use um, the Windows products. So check out the site, there's a lot of different things on there, um, things that I did, didn't cover, but there's so much on there that you can't cover it in just a short segment. So again, it is pil-network.com. Check it out, a good, Microsoft a good Microsoft resource for you to use in your classroom. That's going to do it for today's episode. Before we close, we want to make sure that we show some love to some teachers who are doing some great things in the classroom with technology, with their students. Um, there's two teachers in particular that came to our attention. The first one is Elizabeth Hosmer. She's a teacher at Moorhead Academy, and she was featured on Time Warner Cable News for how she's using iPads in the classroom. Great job, Ms. Hosmer. We wanted to make sure that we said thank you for everything that you're doing. There's also another teacher, Miss Tony Hall. She is a teacher at Rocky River High School. She was awarded a full scholarship, let me get it right, to the Richard Tapia Celebration of Diversity in Computing Conference in Seattle, Washington. Over 200 people applied to this conference. Only 20 people were selected, and she was one of those people. So, Miss Hall, congratulations. We want to say thank you. Have a great time at that conference. Bring back all that great knowledge um, and share it with our staff and uh, with your students. Well, that's it for this week's episode of ITW. Make sure that you send us your, your feedback. Maybe you have a teacher who's doing some great things that you weren't recognized on the show. We would love to hear that. Any of your, any of your feedback, any of your comments, questions, concerns, we would love to hear that. Send us your, uh, send us an email at itw at cms.k12.nc.us. And you can send us a tweet at CMS to the core. Hopefully, Dave will be back next week. Things will run a little bit better. better. But um, until then, stay tuned for next week's edition of ITW, where we will show you different resources that you can use in your classroom. Hey, what's up, man? Man, I might be able to make it today. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on at work today. I, I just, I just don't think I'm able to make it. Do you think you can manage by yourself? You gonna be nervous? You gonna be all right? You sure, man? Sure. All right, thanks. I appreciate it, man. I bet he passed out. Oh well, time to go skiing. <laughs> Woo. I'm ready to hit the slopes. <laughs> <laughs>